All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Correct. Loser. I hope you're doing well. So folks, today we are going to go over the first 40 minutes of the interrogation of Sarah Boone. She takes a beat down for the ages. It's an all-timer, but real quick, big announcement. I am officially on Cameo. Yes. So if you or a friend or a family member need a personalized video for an occasion, or not an occasion, a little pick-me-up, whatever it is, I'm here for you. Find me on Cameo. I'll link my new Cameo profile in the description of this video. Also, in the description of this video, I will link the full two-hour Sarah Boone interrogation video. It was uploaded a week ago by a YouTuber that goes by Mentor Lawyer, same guy that uploaded the Denise Williams interrogation pretty recently. So check out his video, check out his channel, give him some love. Okay. The best way to set this up is to quickly go over the events that led to Sarah Boone to be literally backed into a corner in a little white room with homicide detectives leaning in while she desperately tries to convince them and herself that it was a good day. Everybody's having a good day. And the whole thing starts on a Monday. Hey, how was your weekend? On a Monday in February of 2020 in Central Florida when a 911 call comes in, the dispatcher picks it up and says, do you need police or medical? There's a pause and Sarah Boone says, my boyfriend is dead. And the dispatcher says, stand by for fire. And the firefighter gets on and they get the addresses and stuff out of the way. And he goes, so what happened? And so this now is the first time that Sarah has to say the story that she's going with out loud. I've done a whole video on calling 911 on yourself. It's not easy. The timing has to be right. The emotions have to be right. The story has to be there. It's being recorded. You only get one shot. And Sarah Boone is a practiced, lying, manipulative wormhole to hell. And she even still has trouble getting this out of her mouth. And she speeds up at parts just to get him out of the way. And she pauses, almost to brace herself, like, can't believe I have to say this. But so the firefighter guy goes, what happened? And Sarah Boone says, quote, my boyfriend and I were playing last night and... I put him in a suitcase when we were playing, like kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep and I woke up and he was dead inside the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. And the firefighter doesn't really hear her, I don't think, because later he goes, so was he hanging from something? And she goes, no, she gets loud real quick. No, he was in a suitcase. And he's going, all right, well, you got to take him out of the suitcase. And she goes, I did. And he goes, is she breathing? And she goes, no, he's purple. And then a couple questions each time, he'll ask her a question and the answer is just, no, he's purple. He's purple. And then they get her doing, um, it's George is the purple guy. It's her husband or fiance in the, you know, the luggage. And so they're going, okay, we'll start CPR. And so apparently she does. People think maybe she wasn't even doing CPR, but the paramedics show up. She's still on the line. So you hear the paramedics come in and he must have just, George must have just looked horrible because they didn't even try anything. They came in and just said, he's been gone for too long. There's nothing we can do. So just like that, the whole thing turns into an investigation. The detectives head out there. By this point, it's getting towards the evening. And as you can imagine, they need to talk to Sarah. And the story that, or the picture that Sarah paints of the day before when it happened is truly horrifying. She goes, she paints that we were just, it was a good day. Everything was good. We weren't fighting. Uh, we weren't drunk. We had a couple glasses of wine out. The weather was good. We had a couple glasses of wine outside. We were smoking a couple cigarettes. And then we went in and literally did puzzles, painted, and played. And that's what she, she says that a bunch of times. Did puzzles, painted, and played. And so I guess they went in and did a puzzle for a little bit. It was just great vibes. I love puzzles. This is so fun. 
we're having a great day. And then they did uh, painting and I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but she describes the moment and sure it's all just nonsense, but she describes the moment where they apparently went from painting to just your standard adult game of hide and go seek. And it sounds hilarious. They're going, well, how did it, you know, go from painting to then the the adult hide and go seek game in a small townhouse. And she's going, so we were painting and it was like, oh, I don't want to paint anymore. So, uh, do you want to play hide and go seek? Yeah, sure. So, okay, tag, you're it. And so now they're just playing an adult game of hide and go seek in a tiny, according to her, in a small townhouse that for some reason starts with someone saying, tag, you're it. And then there was a big suitcase there because according to her, they were going to get rid of a bunch of her son's clothes that don't fit anymore. So then I guess a part, the next part of your classic adult game of hide and go seek was, okay, you, George, you get in the suitcase and then I'll zip you up in it because everybody knows hide and go seek. First, you do tag your it as an adult, right? Tag, you're it, okay, and then hide. I'll help you hide somewhere where you can't get out of and where I know you are, and then I will uh, go to bed. So she paints the picture that, yeah, just painting, having a good day. Oh, my gosh, what a day. Can't believe it's so good. Puzzles, painting, adult hide-and-go-seek. Whoa, the suitcase is right there. It will be so funny to get in the suitcase, get in the suitcase. Oh, he did zip them up, but not all the way, you know? And then then she says that they're laughing. They were both laughing. And because it was just so fun and good, and they were having just such a good day, she accidentally, it wasn't her plan. While he was in the suitcase, she went up and went to bed and fell asleep, thinking that he would get out because it was just a fun game of adult hide and go seek, not thinking in a million years that she would come down 12 hours later and he would be dead and purple. So that's the story that uh, that she said that night. And the detectives, I'm sure we're sitting there going, okay, adult hide and seek, great. All right, and oh, they don't have too much to push back on her that night. You know, they, they're doing the investigation. So they say, okay, just horsing around, um, hide and seek, went really bad, accident. Yeah, all right, okay. Well, we would like for you to come back in tomorrow. So that was on a Monday. If you would, come back um, on Tuesday. We'd like to just come in, we'll talk. And um, Sarah agrees to do that. I think part of just the whole, she feels that part of the whole going with the whole, it just was a big, it just was a really unfortunate accident during a game of adult hide and go seek. If she clams up and doesn't want to work with them or all of a sudden, then I think she, she thinks that will look suspicious. And also, I think she is deep down scared that she's going to be arrested and go to jail forever. She says in the interrogation, I didn't sleep last night at all, Think trying to act like it's because she's just so broken up out of because of George being dead. But I think it was just there was no relaxation wondering what is going to happen. Are they going to arrest me? Do they believe my story? I bet she was up all night biting her knuckle. So I think a part of while she subjected herself to such a beat down is she just wanted to get back in there and to see what is going to happen but anyway she's like yeah i'll come in the next day and before they leave the detectives get her phone her son a laptop that her son uses but their laptop uh, they get like a receipt from Publix out of the trash. You know, they do a whole investigation. The George's body goes to the medical examiner. And that night, they actually get a solid amount, excuse me, a solid amount of evidence. One being, they go to the medical exam, or George goes to the medical examiner and his head is swollen and he's got bruising and he's all scratched up. So it's like, all right, we got, doesn't, That doesn't really go with just, it was such a good day. We painted, and then the adult hide-and-go-seek. It's just so fun and good. And so, okay, they, the, you know, the medical examiner is like, yeah, he's got bruising here. They don't, they didn't even know right away if he's, 
uh, suffocated or if it was because of the head. So um, the next day when she comes in for the, the second questioning or the interrogation, at that point, the cause of death is still pending. But what I don't think they thought they were going to get in a million years is they, you know, she handed her phone over and they handed her phone over to the tech guy. And video, there's two videos on her phone that I'm sure it, they didn't ever said, but I'm sure that she took that night and then deleted them. That's why she just handed over her. She's clueless. I don't think in a million years she, she thought if she took horrifying videos of the torture murder suitcase scene from the night before, as long as she deleted them, yeah, here's my phone. Enjoy. Look through it. There's a picture of a dog on it. There you go. But they give the phone over to the tech guy. The tech guy easily brings the deleted videos and pictures back to life. And the videos are something else. It, the videos pop up with the suitcase with George in the suitcase. And, you know, obviously you can't see George. So it's just a suitcase that's just bouncing and moving a little bit as someone inside desperately tries to get out and you can hear George go Sarah Sarah and you just hear Sarah go fuck you in a just a mean voice just fuck you and you hear George go Sarah Sarah I can't breathe babe and she she goes that's what it feels like when you cheat on me He's going, Sarah, he's begging for his life, saying he can't raise Sarah. She goes, that's what it feels like when you cheat on me. And he's going, Sarah. And the poor guy, he's in the suitcase. The suitcase is, you know, jostling. And in the, dif the different videos and pictures, the suitcase is in on different sides and upside down painting the picture that not only was she walking around filming while he while he's going Sarah and she goes that's my name don't wear it out I mean how horrifying is that and not only is she just walking around going that's my name don't wear it out but she's also flipping the thing with him in it he can't breathe we'll go over the timeline I want to get too ahead of myself but it's just terrifying the timeline that she paints once she's forced to do it so they have these videos now and it's like well that doesn't the whole good day it was such a good day with no fighting it was puzzles and it was painting and then it was a funny game of adult hide and go seek that never turned into a fight where George was laughing and I was laughing and it was so fun I got so tired that I just went to bed and so they're thinking all right Sarah I mean, imagine that you're, you're, that you're the detectives and you get, you hear, I'm sure they got a call or an email or something being like, yeah, we got, we pulled these videos off her phone and it is a full blown torture murder situation. And so, you know, Sarah's coming back the next day for a interrogation. So you got to come up with a strategy. So they obviously are not going to come out right at the beginning of the interrogation and say, we got the video, Sarah, you're done. You got to slow play it. You got to everything that she went on and on about the night before, everything that the video proves wrong, they want to ask her about that. So, you know, they seem a little bit drunk in the videos, but not like blackout sloppy, but they want to ask her because she had said, no, we weren't drunk at all or, you know, we didn't fight at all. So they want to ask her all those again and just to see what she said. And then right at the 40 minute mark about that's where we're going to end this one. And then we're going to we'll do the, the next episode on the rest of it. But right about the 40 minute mark, that's when they say, all right, well, we're we want to show you something from, that we found from your phone. And she she is hit buy it like a truck i mean imagine thinking like okay it's it's totally unbelievable that i'm going with the adult game of hide and go seek goes bad but you know what are they gonna do it's not illegal to be weird and she thinks i deleted those videos what are they gonna do and so when they flip there's a laptop they all get into the interrogation room and there's a laptop sitting on the table and Sarah has no idea that that laptop will be 
opened and swung around and the video on that laptop will hit her like a club. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. So they sit down. Sarah, welcome back. And she's one of the funniest things is she uh, uh, to try to appear like a concerned wife that lost her husband in just an unfortunate hide and go seek accident. She brought a list uh, of questions and concerns that she wants to ask them, not knowing that it's going to be a total beat down. And so she comes in and goes, yes, I actually brought a list of um, questions I'd like to ask you guys about. And the detectives are like, yeah, sure. Just hold on. We, we got some things to do first. So she sets those aside. And then there's an hour and a half of just carnage. And they go through the whole thing and the videos and the whole thing's out. And then at the, the back half of the whole interrogation, she... They're like, all right, do you want to go over your questions and concerns? And by that point, they're totally absurd. So she has to put on this face of like, yeah, that didn't just happen. So should I reach out to his friends or are you going to? And it's just, like I said, it's absurd, but I want to get ahead of myself. All right. So they sit down and the first thing, again, they're not going to do the video that they have too early they want to they want her to go on and on and boy does she and um, so they sit her down and they say okay Sarah we talked to the medical examiner and they start with the injuries they it, it came back and he's got some scratching on his back and she's like I know what that's from being like sex <laughs> but she's like he's he scratched and um then they go, well, he's got bruising on his head. And his head is actually even swollen. And she, you can see, was just prepared to, to really just be like, I have no idea. I have no idea. It was a good day. We were having a good day. We literally, she goes, we literally sat outside had a glass or two of wine and some cigarettes and then literally went inside for some puzzles and painting and play. And that's why my mind is blown because we were having a good day. No one put their hands on each other. No one was out of sorts. And the, just how like mad and she gets, it's like, all right, well, it kind of sounds like you guys did get out of sorts. But she's going, it was a good day. Nobody touched anything anybody so they're like okay well where how did he get how did he get the uh, the his head is swollen Sarah I have no idea we were good and and then she's like well maybe he's notorious for running into walls which is probably true I think they're both alcoholics but we we were having, my mind is blown. We were having a good day. We've been good. And then the homicide detective goes, well, what's your definition of good? And then she goes, well, I've been good. And through this first day with these questions, the kind of the arc that she goes on is that she'll say like, he is not been good and he is really bad and tries to paint him in whatever they're talking about the worst light possible but then says that how much she loves him and then she'll start crying and then how much she helps him and then just kind of rambles until they want another question so she she he goes what's your definition of good because she was going we've been good and he goes she goes well i've been good and then not really knowing where to go, she makes herself the victim. She goes, you guys don't understand. He comes at me. He comes at me. And then the detectives are going, okay, well, and she's going, and I either can flee or I can go up. She's always just like the perfectly behaved one. He comes at me and I can either flee or go upstairs and read a book or, and they're going, okay, well, you were, 
I asked you last night when we first talked, and then even today, you you guys you were saying that you guys had been good, and the last time you got physical was like a month ago. And she's like, yeah, give or take. Anytime like a time comes up or a date, she thinks it'll help her. Like if the time 6 p.m. comes up, like 6 p.m. she'll go six ish, or like a month ago, give or take. She think that's like her big strategy, ish, give or take. But they're going. Um, She's going, I've been good. And I'm like, all right, what's your definition of good? And he comes at me. And then they're like, well, you had said that, well, did he come at you on Sunday? And she goes, no, 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 no. Like, it doesn't fit with her story. So she's going, no, 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 that, it was, um, so there, the detectives are always listening to some long-winded story being like, all right, well, that, was you said that that's a while ago let's talk about sunday and she does not want to talk about sunday and everything she's every time she does it sounds totally bizarre so she they're going okay well you if he hasn't come at you for a while and you said yesterday was just such an amazingly good day what do you mean by he comes at me he comes at me and then she goes he gets belligerently drunk he gets belligerently drunk, and then she goes on this long-winded thing about their drinking and how he can't handle the stresses of life and just starts drinking, but she can handle the stresses of life. And at one point she goes, when she's just rambling about their drinking, she goes, I don't drink. I can't drink. Number one, I don't want to drink because I need my sorts about me. And it's one of those, like, listening to it, like, I don't drink. I can't drink. Number one, I don't want to drink. It's one of those, like, after you listen to it, you think, like, you get drunk every day, don't you? But it, So she's painting George as this mean, sloppy drunk and her as this person. It's like, I'll have like a couple glasses of wine or on the weekends maybe. The weekends, she goes, that's when you have fun, on the weekends because you don't have to get up. And it's, it's just, she's trying to sound like the good one that has it together and not just a partner in a disastrous relationship. But again, she can't admit that any of this sloppy drinking or any of the abuse that she's now painting George as, it all doesn't really help her story because it's all a month ago. Anytime they're like, okay, so all that stuff you're saying right now, did that happen Sunday? No, 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 it was a good day. We, it was one of our better days. We were having such a good day. Okay, let me see if make sure I'm not leaving anything out of this part. Oh yeah, and then she goes, so she's talking about, you know, he 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 gets black out, he drinks, and she says it's kind of ironic. She goes, I don't know if you guys have gone through my phone yet and saw the videos and pictures. What she's referring to is as they're, you know, when they get into a big fight, she'll take a video or a picture of the knot on her head <clears throat> or whatever it is. But you think the detectives are sitting there knowing they have the video of her going, shut up. This is what it feels like when you cheat on me. And the, the suitcase is lumping a little bit. So she's going, I don't know if you guys saw my, the videos and pictures on my phone. And they're probably going, you have no idea what's coming in about 30 minutes, Sarah. Uh, but again, they're like, all right, so was any of that happening? The abuse that you're talking about, the the being drunk, all, any of that re happened recently? She goes, no, 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 this is all like a month ago because she has to paint the picture that it was good. They didn't get into a fight. It was just laughing. It was just your classic game of adult hide-and-go-seek going the wrong way. And so they're constantly pulling her back. All right, well, can we talk about Sunday? At one point, they're like, sorry, I kind of lost you. She's... She's talking about how much she helps him. Like, yeah, that's why I got the puzzles and the painting. So we wouldn't have a drink. Or so he wouldn't have a drink. Okay, so they, like, get through that part of her just rambling on and on. And then they want to ask her, so did you talk about your relationship that night? Knowing that she did in an extremely mean, scary way during the suitcase torture murder scenario but so they ask her did you talk about your relationship and she goes no we were just laughing we didn't it was a good day and she essentially rambles on about how George can just can't handle the stresses of life and how she you know she's always the one that's like 
you can talk to me. I call, she goes, I call George the volcano because he, he just leaves everything in and then he explodes. And I'm saying, put it on me, get, put the burden on me. And, um, saying that she just helps him and over and over again, she goes, ask anyone, ask his parole officer, ask the, he has to go to like anger management classes or something. Ask everybody. They will tell you how much I help them where it starts to come off as, or like how much I take care of them, how much I help them. It starts to come off that this is her sick little like narcissistic project. The way she starts talking about George is like a kid, but that she doesn't have to love as much like her normal kid and how she gets all of this attention for helping him and being there. And you can start to see this like unhealthy where she gets something out of it. But, um, and then they gave, they give her a chance, the detectives, which is a legitimate question. They said, well, did it just become too much for you then and you snapped you're always taking care of him you're always he's depending on you and all this stuff and she goes no 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 it was a good time and then they bring it back to the injuries they're like well it's unexplainable how he got these injuries his head is swollen and she goes a hundred percent right hand to god which i've never heard i don't even know what that criteria is but she goes a hundred percent right hand to god i have no idea how we got them and they're going all right and then now it's the beginning of the end for sarah she goes or the detective goes you said you uh take video and photo and uh sarah goes yeah yeah not for a while that was all you know a month a month ago give or take and then she goes back into, like, you can ask his parole officer. The parole officer hugged me, told me how great I am, how much I'm saving George. And um, they're like, all right, so you didn't take, you don't remember any, any videos or pictures from Sunday. And you can tell that Sarah remembers the videos. But she's, you could tell, uh, well, in her head, she's telling herself, I deleted those. But the way that the te- detectives are asking her, like, no videos or pictures on Sunday, she's going, I don't think so. I, I, I may have taken a picture of a dog. One of her ways to explain how great the day was is that George was playing with her dog. He was playing with the dog. He loves the dog. And so he's like, maybe... Um, pictures of the dog but no and they're going okay all right all right and then the last little thing is they go since yesterday do you maybe remember the timeline a little bit more you had said you guys started the whole activities around 4 p.m and then you went and she's like ish and the detective's like 4 p 4 ish and then you went to bed at midnight and sarah's like ish ish and the detective's like, ish, but that's the only times I have. That's a big gap, the four to midnight. So um, do you remember? And it just sounds so funny to hear Sarah talk about that day. And because she's been talking about months ago and the parole officer and how great she is, but now she has to talk about the day. And she's going, okay, well, we were outside and the weather was good and we were having a couple cigarettes and... A little bit of wine, but we weren't drunk or anything. And it was like, oh, all right. Uh, I don't want to be out here anymore. So let's go in. Okay, yeah, let's go in. So we go in, and uh, we're doing the puzzle. And we get done with the puzzle, and it's like, okay, let's paint. Okay, yeah, let's paint. And so we're painting, and we're listening to music. And she has this whole story about how she doesn't like his music, so she asked him to turn it down. And it's like, who cares, Sarah? And she's saying, so we're painting, and then it's like, ugh, I don't want to paint anymore. All right, uh, okay, tag, you're it. And we started playing hide-and-go-seek, and they asked her about the suitcase, which she said that George actually brought down with the whole, you know, donating her son's old clothes, and that she put him in the suitcase, and they're asking your times, and she's going, well, okay, so we did painting for an hour and a half, so... 
around like eight ish we started playing um hide and go seek which the videos that she took of the lumping suitcase that is in different positions as she flipped it around and everything those videos are from like 11 12 so was he you know she's talking about that the game started at eight and they know that he was at least in the the suitcase from 11 you know to like 11 20 or something and so she's doing the times um <laughs> like it's just so crazy that she's going okay eight o'clock and one last thing is they ask her is um is they make sure they they ask her okay is your your cell phone is password protected right and she's going yeah and they're like you're the only one that can get into it right um just so she can't say that was someone else filming the horrifying video and she's going no yeah it's a password and i have facial recognition and then with a big breath okay okay i have something to show you from your phone and they flip they, the laptop that has just been sitting on the counter, not doing anything. Again, Sarah has no idea. It's going to ple- completely change her life. They flip, o- they flip around the laptop, open it up, and um, click play. And Sarah's looking at it, and she realizes what it is. And her face, I just imagine the, everything just runs out of her face. And she... She's the first thing she says is, no, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember doing I don't remember filming that. And it's just there's a quick little clip of just going, Sarah, Sarah and her going, this is for everything you've done to me, Sarah, this is for everything you've done to me. And she's watching it. And then she goes, your battery's about to die. And the laptop couldn't be more perfect to just build the tension it's almost like a movie the laptop runs out of batteries so she just saw just enough to know what it is to know oh my god they have those videos how did they get them i deleted them did i forget to delete them i'm sure her mind is just going a million miles a second and the whole it was a good day of puzzles and adult hide and go seek she knows she's enough practice of a liar to know that it's going to be real hard to paint that picture now and then the computer dies it was enough to know all of that she knows everything and the computer dies and then the detectives go oh well i thought that the battery would last longer than that and the other detectives like well it used to and the detectives like well hold on a second, I'll just go get a power cord. And the female detective gets up and leaves the room. And it's just the male detective and her left in there. And she now is just caught in a spiral of what she's going to say. How do you explain that? How did, how did they get that? I mean, she's sitting there and the detective, I think just to break the awkward silence, like... You know, she he was like, so when you said earlier that, you know, we asked you if you'd ever put him in a suitcase before, you said no in kind of like a no, no type of way. Why would you say no in, in, in that way, like such a hard no? And so now they're talking about something they had already talked about in the interrogation as if that video hadn't just been shown to her. And she's going, she goes, I don't think that you guys understand who I am. And... He goes, okay, well, tell me. And she goes, I've always been a straight-A student. Granted, she's 42. No one cares about grades. He goes, I've always been a straight-A student. I am an outstanding mother to my child. I excel at everything. And right as she says that in just a crazy tone of voice and face, I excel at everything. The other detective comes back in with the power cord and now Sarah's sitting there just frazzled she doesn't want to watch the video she doesn't know what to do it totally ruins the picture she's been painting so the other detectives just nonchalantly okay we gotta plug in the computer plug it into the wall and Sarah is doing everything she can thinking furiously to how to get out of watching these videos without it making it look suspicious so she's going uh 
do I have to watch the video? I, and they're like, oh, it just came from your phone. We just want you to watch it real quick. And she's Sarah sitting there. And she goes, uh, I don't know if I can watch it. I've been constantly throwing up and I didn't sleep last night. And they're like, well, you know, it's just your phone. They're getting it set up, not giving too much uh, thought to what she's saying. And then she just goes, I don't want to watch the video. And they go, well, and they handled this part really good. They're like, well, it came from your phone. We think you should watch it. And if you don't, we want you to explain it. And if not, we're just going to take it for what it is. This is your chance to explain it. And then that becomes too much for Sarah. So she's like, okay. And they put it on and it, you know, it's just the video of just Sarah, I can't breathe, going completely against everything she says. And after it's a two minute video, I think she probably makes it 10 seconds only. She backs up into her, you know, against the wall. And for the first time, she doesn't have her loud, manipulative, lying voice. She backs up and just goes, I don't want to watch it, please. And what I wish the detectives would have done is just sat there in silence. Detective turns it off and they sit there and then the other detective goes into, well, yesterday you had said it's all fun and games and then this. And that's where we are going to cut it off for the day. Um, we're going to pick up um, next week on the rest of the interrogation it's one of the most outrageous ones I've ever seen. I've never seen anyone bouncing around with the story she's going. Because after the video, they show her the video, it's just all bets are off. And so she's testing stories where she'll say it and then gauge reaction from the detectives and then just pull out and go a different way. After saying, we weren't drunk, we don't drink, I don't drink it ever. She blames it on the wine. I'm blaming the wine. And it's just absolutely fascinating so we'll pick it up there i love you all cut it off here see you next time why stab and why Shum.